has five hours to listen to a court hearing, then take another three hours to make a 15 minute summary vlog? I do, and I will. Viva Fry Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is the latest installment in the never-ending Michael Flynn judicial saga. There was a court hearing before Judge Sullivan on the... what was it again? Oh yeah, that's right. The motion to dismiss the criminal complaint against Michael Flynn under Rule 48A that was referred back down to Judge Sullivan after a hearing of a full panel of the Court of Appeal, after a hearing of a three-judge panel of the Court of Appeal. If you don't know what's going on, I'm going to link my playlist right there. Give it a watch if you have... Seven hours now? Split decision two to one by the Court of Appeal to grant Michael Flynn's petition for the issuance of a writ of mandamus. That was sent back up to the full panel on a petition for rehearing en banc by Judge Sullivan, which the court determined was in fact a sua sponte hearing by the entire court. The full panel, in an overwhelming majority decision, vacated the three judges' decision, sent the file back to Judge Sullivan to adjudicate on the motion to dismiss under the Federal Rules of Procedure 48A. Now, I listened to the arguments that were presented before the Court of Appeal, and that took over four hours. I prepared a summary vlog on that. Well, these arguments before Judge Sullivan took five hours. Five hours of what was painful and confusing even to a lawyer. I can only imagine how boring and confusing it could be to the general population. Who would even take the time to watch that in the first place? So I will save you the painful five hours of listening to it for yourselves in this condensed summary vlog. Now, apparently we are not allowed rebroadcasting any portion of the hearing before Judge Sullivan. So I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to summarize what actually happened chapter by chapter. Chapter 1. Intro Joke. If the amicus Gleason is the friend of Judge Emmett Sullivan's court, well, Sidney Powell is quite clearly the enemy of Judge Sullivan's court, and that was clear in his demeanor vis-a-vis -vis both of them. Alright, intro joke aside, just to introduce the parties if you don't happen to know who they are for whatever the reason, Judge Emmett Sullivan is the judge presiding over the case. He has been the judge presiding over the case since it was transferred to him by one Judge Contreras. Okay, hold on. I love correcting myself. It wasn't transferred to him by Judge Contreras. It was transferred to him from Judge Contreras. Apparently Judge Emmett Sullivan was randomly assigned to the file when Contreras had to recuse himself because he had a prior existing relationship with Peter Stroke. And because I'm now editing the video, I realized that I forgot to actually get back to the point I wanted to make. During the hearing, Judge Emmett Sullivan said that he didn't know why Judge Contreras had to recuse himself from the file. And that was my biggest takeaway from this entire hearing, and I went to Twitter to post an undumb thing on Twitter. I said if Sullivan didn't know why Contreras recused himself from the file, he is either not being transparent or he didn't read the actual file, because Sidney Powell explained why Contreras recused himself from the file. Back to the video. Amicus Gleason. Amicus is Latin for friend of the court, and Amicus Gleason is the friend of the court that was appointed by Judge Emmett Sullivan to present arguments in opposition to the Department of Justice's motion to dismiss the criminal complaint against Michael Flynn. Sidney Powell is Michael Flynn's attorney, and Cole and Mupan are the attorneys for the Department of Justice presenting the motion to dismiss the charges against Michael Flynn. Chapter 2. The Never-Ending Intro. Amicus Gleason gave a lengthy intro of the facts that he finds relevant, and when I say lengthy, I think he gave intro facts for over an hour. And by and large, other than speaking time, it added nothing to the debate. It's nothing we haven't heard time and time again. Yes, Michael Flynn pled guilty twice. Yes, he confirmed to two separate judges that he was pleading guilty in full awareness of fact and law, although he was not in full awareness of fact or law. Gleason harps on this, totally ignoring the additional exculpatory evidence that was recently disclosed that hadn't been disclosed in violation of the Brady disclosure requirements under Sullivan's order himself. But whatever, we would expect nothing less from Amicus Gleason, who was appointed by Judge Sullivan to present arguments in opposition to the Department of Justice's motion to dismiss. He is an interested party. He has a position to present, even if that means ignoring the evidence that goes against that position. So by and large, no real disagreement on the facts, save and except for one fact as relates to the materiality of the false statements Flynn purportedly made. It has been the position of the new Department of Justice that the false statements that Flynn may have made, even though they don't really acknowledge that they were necessarily false, but rather equivocal, that they were not material to the investigation in the first place and therefore should not serve as the basis for the charges. Amicus Gleason, on the other hand, argues 
news, obviously, that they were, in fact, material, that they were false statements, and therefore that Michael Flynn should be prosecuted. But as far as I am concerned, the most amazing thing, or what others might take to be the most shocking thing, is the demeanor between Judge Emmett Sullivan and Amicus Gleason. It is literally like Judge Sullivan is having a discussion with himself. It literally sounds like they're the best of friends. Amicus Gleason is praising the court, being all flattery. Judge Emmett Sullivan is like, yes, these are very good points. How do I know that the government can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt Michael Flynn's guilt? Amicus Gleason then goes on to put quite a bit of emphasis on how involved President Trump has been in the court file through his tweets, and we're going to get back to this because this was pretty much the biggest bombshell of the entire hearing. And I am referring to Sidney Powell's admission that she had discussions with President Trump about this case just to whet your appetite. We'll get back to that. <laughs> Uh. Amicus Gleason argues, and to his credit, it's among his strongest arguments, that Trump's involvement, even by way of tweets, sort of broke down the independence between the executive and the judiciary. Personally, I am thoroughly unconvinced by that argument, but as I always say, it doesn't really matter what I think, all that matters is what the judge thinks. Mupan for the government comes in and raises arguments which also are not new. They are things we've heard time and time again, that although the court is not a rubber stamp, it has minimal discretion in deciding whether or not to grant a motion to dismiss under the Federal Rules of Procedure 48A. Mupan argues that once the prosecutor and the defendant agree on the dismissal of charges, there is no longer a case or controversy for a judge to adjudicate on. And the constitutional arguments that we have heard time and time again and read in the briefs, that the judge cannot second-guess the executive branch's authority to decide what to prosecute and what not to prosecute. The separation of powers between the judicial branch and the executive branch. But things get really interesting when Judge Emmett Sullivan brings up a June 2019 letter that Sidney Powell apparently wrote to Attorney General Barr asking him to dismiss the charges against Michael Flynn. Apparently at the time Sidney Powell wrote this letter, she wasn't actually representing Michael Flynn, and Judge Emmett Sullivan thinks that there might be something of an ethical issue with this. I don't know if there is, but what is clear is that his demeanor with Sidney Powell is radically different than his demeanor with Amicus Gleason. Some of you out there might write this off as my own bias, but I think it's relatively objective. Judge Gleason was rude with Sidney Powell. He interrupted her, he wouldn't let her finish her sentences, he was curt, whereas with Amicus Gleason, it was like they were best buddies meeting up in a courtroom. But setting that aside, getting to the substance of Judge Emmett Sullivan's issue with the letter that Sidney Powell wrote to Attorney General Barr in June 2019. Sullivan thinks it's peculiar and potentially unethical for Sidney Powell to have written a letter to Attorney General Barr when she was not in fact representing Michael Flynn. I don't see any issue with that whatsoever, but again, my opinion is utterly meaningless, at least as far as, I don't know, judgments are concerned. The DOJ confirms that their decision to review Flynn's file had nothing to do with Sidney Powell's letter to Attorney General Barr, although I still don't understand what difference that would have made, but whatever. They confirmed that their decision to review Flynn's file had nothing to do with that letter, but only to do with the FBI misconduct that recently came to light. But it wasn't Sidney Powell's 2019 letter to Attorney General Barr that was the biggest bombshell of this hearing. It was her admission that she in fact met with President Donald Trump to debrief him on the state of the file. What? No. No. What? <gasps> Now, why might this be such a big deal? Well, you know from the beginning that Gleason was going to argue that the decision to drop the charges against Michael Flynn was a purely politically motivated decision, and just like this, a gift from heaven, they get an admission that Sidney Powell had met with Donald Trump. If I am Amicus Gleason or Judge Emmett Sullivan, you know darn well I'm jumping all over this because it is the perfect distraction from all of the damning evidence that has since been released about the FBI misconduct. Now, Amicus Gleason can conveniently ignore all of the evidence of FBI misconduct, pound on the table, and say, how dare Sidney Powell actually meet with President Donald Trump? Trump, the decision to drop these charges is purely politically motivated. Judge Emmett Sullivan, you cannot grant the motion to dismiss. Judge Sullivan then goes on to ask more questions to Sidney Powell about her meetings with Donald Trump, and she tries to raise executive privilege, at which point Judge Sullivan reminds her that she's not an employee of the government, so she drops that relatively quickly. As far as I'm concerned, I would have raised solicitor-client privilege, because her meeting with Donald Trump related to her relationship with her client Michael Flynn, and I think solicitor-client privilege would have been a better try than executive privilege, but it's very easy to blame Monday morning quarterback when you're not the person in the hot at the time. There is subsequent discussion between the government and Judge Sullivan as to whether or not there's a difference between dismissing charges pre-plea versus post-plea, but we've already discussed this in previous vlogs. But Sullivan then asks the DOJ what prohibits him from dismissing the charges but without prejudice and not with prejudice. And recall from previous vlogs, dismissal with prejudice means that you can never be sued on the same basis again, whereas dismissal without prejudice means that you can be sued or file charges on the same basis. So Judge Emmett Sullivan is opining on the possibility of granting the DOJ's 
motion to dismiss, but without prejudice, meaning that Michael Flynn could, in theory, have the same charges pressed against him in the future. Now, again, in my humble opinion, I think this entire discussion is relatively academic because even if Sullivan dismisses the charges without prejudice, I have no doubt that Flynn is getting pardoned. In fact, Flynn is getting pardoned one way or the other. In fact, I take that back. It's not an academic discussion. It becomes a political one because then Sullivan can dismiss the charges without prejudice, meaning that Flynn can get re-prosecuted for the same crimes. And if Trump comes in and pardons him, then it becomes a political issue, which I guess would be something of a moral victory for Sullivan. Now let's get into what I think is the second bombshell of this hearing. Peter Stroke, that FBI agent who may or may not have behaved properly in the context of the investigation, apparently a couple of days before this hearing, through counsel, filed a letter in the court record attesting to the fact that some of the notes that we saw on the newly disclosed FBI documents were not his notes. Disgraced FBI agent Peter Stroke claims letters used in Flynn case, quote, altered. Fired FBI agent Peter Stroke has claimed that some of his letters and texts were, quote, altered before they were submitted as evidence by lawyers fighting to clear former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. This was obviously denied by counsel, who also took issue with the fact that the judge was relying on documents that were not part of the court record and that were only filed on the eve of this hearing. From what I understand, the judge granted something like a week to look into and verify whether or not those documents were in fact altered, and I don't like the fact that the judge is adding additional delays, and we're going to get into that as relates to Sidney Powell's request for the judge to recuse himself. In the context of the file, Sidney Powell is fighting hard, and she says that the judge suffers from an abject bias and should recuse himself from the file, to which the judge says you should have made this motion a while back, and if you want to do it, I will entertain it in the future. And apparently Sidney Powell will make a motion asking that the judge recuse himself from the file, but I really don't like this move unless there's a reason to do it that I am not aware of, because it is only going to add additional delays to this file. That, and we know that Judge Sullivan is never going to recuse himself from the file. He was basically given the blessing of the Court of Appeal to not recuse himself from the file. Maybe Sidney Powell just wants to draw more public attention to what she feels to be the abject bias and misconduct of Judge Sullivan in the conduct of this file, but I don't think that motion stands any chance of success, and it only delays Judge Sullivan rendering a motion on the Department of Justice's motion to dismiss. <sighs> That's a lot of, that's a lot of words. It would be a motion which, in my opinion, has zero chance of success. The Court of Appeal has basically said as much. It would only add additional delays to the file, but maybe Sidney Powell has a strategy that I am not familiar with, and who am I to second guess her because she's been doing a great job in this file. So that is the summary of five hours of argument before the judge. I hope you liked it, and I hope it was clear enough, concise enough, fast enough, and that you didn't fall asleep. And if you like my videos and you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Be Missy Mouse. If you want to support the channel, all of the support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar, YouTube membership. We've got merch, politics, ruins, everything. But more important than any of that, take care of yourselves. Check in on friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Yeah.